Mr. David Dahl today, and he said yes, as you indicated yesterday, he's out for the year. That's what he told me. Yeah. So, given that, uh, can you, in a nutshell, tell us the things that you you really like from David before the injury, and what the steps might be for him to take it to the next level? Well, I think with you know with David, we saw you know a guy you know when the season started. You know, I think on a mission. I, I really believe he was on a mission to, to prove that you know he was going to be a productive everyday player, and I think that was was accomplished. Right? I mean, there was a, you know a couple of interruptions, obviously here. You know this, you know this latest injury, and you know earlier in the year he missed time right in April. But up in the, you know, the time that he was on the field, uh, that he, you know, I mean, I think he showed what an all-around talent he is. You know, very excited that he made the All-Star team. Uh, you know that he was recognized by you know his peers, uh, coaches, managers. I mean, he played at that level, and you know, we hit in the middle of our order. And we had him, you know, in a number of spots, but. You know, you saw the all-around game show up, but I still think there's more in there. I really do. Because I think he's, you know, he's just getting, you know, he's just getting stronger. You know? So when you say more, you give us a couple Well, of I, th th I think there's, I mean, well, I think there's, I think there's stolen base in there. Um, so what do you end up hitting? Right around 300? I don't think it was 300. He was like, I was maybe 290. -ish. Somebody look it up. Where is where it's with a fairly large number of strikeouts? It was close enough to where if he performed in the second half, he was a good time. That's what I remember. Stand by. He had 302. Oh, you were right, buddy. On base, 350, 360. 353 on base percentage. LPS, 877. So when you think about David in the OPS, <laughs> 877. Exactly, 877. 302 batting average, 877. Right. I mean, <laughs> but you know, I, I think the you know the numbers speak for themselves, right? And the and it was a large number of at bats. And I think you know, you know, David's bomb. You know, he, he wish he could have been, you know, you know, through the end of the year. And that really did, you know, really could have been signed. But, but you know, that's a lot. To, <clears throat> you know, it's a lot to build on. That right? was a very solid year. But you know, him again is. You know, his experience this year will only help him next year. I think the confidence he gained this year will, again, aid him for next year. He's, again, he's, he's a defender. He has his legs in his game. And he's got power. You know, there's a, you know, the on-base component, I think, will improve. I think, uh, I think the strikeouts are going to come down. I think the walks are going to increase. You know, this was a great build-on year. And you used him at every spot in the outfield. Sure. Yeah. Again, I don't, I don't know whether I've ever said this before, but, you know, in the minor leagues, you know, we, <laughs> we play him. He made um, but he. But his defensive ability, I mean, that gets overlooked sometimes because of the offense. I mean, he might. Well, I mean, not to, I mean, not to us, but, you know, maybe to a lot of people. But, I, you know, I think he, he can really be a complete player. Really Again, I think as each year goes on, uh, you know, I think the confidence both you know, offensively and defensively will show. He's still, but only 24 years old. Can we look at it? <laughs> what about the adjustment he made? I think it was about in May. He went through a period where he struck out some, wasn't happy with his power, and was able to make those adjustments on the move and I'm an all-star. What does it say about him? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think that, you know, I think, you know, he's very confident and he has a lot of pride in his game and he, and he's a, and he's a, he's a quick study about what's going on and what's happening. Uh, you know, I think in real time about how they're pitching him, you know, what pitchers are trying to do, uh, you know, how he sees the game. You know, there's a, there's a lot of positives there that, 
to help him, to your point, make quick adjustments. Because he, 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 he figures things out pretty quick. You, you he have a, and he, he's fine. And he, I think he's, again, it goes back to his confidence. And he thinks he can, he can, he can do things. I don't know where on the fly is the right word, but there are things that he can he can make adjustments rather quickly about, about what's going on. Do you have a rabbit's foot or something? I mean, he's a very unlucky guy with a He's interesting. No, I think this it's just happened. It's, you know, just, it's just hoping that it doesn't happen. You know? yeah. 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 You know, yeah. you know, there's a lot, you know, a lot of players that you know, get a little banged up early and then sort of find it. Yeah. And yeah. find some of your abilities. Hopefully that's I know he, like, like you say, he played all three spots. And he's in meeting and you're sort of, your outfit was kind of fluid for all year looking back. But I mean, he was, I mean, you, you sort of set out with him kind of basically as a left fielder. Is that, is that how you see it in the future? Or? Probably. Probably so. But, uh, probably so. But, but, I mean, you never know how a roster is going to shake out. But, yeah, yeah. But he, you know, with the present group that we have, you know, Charlie, uh, Dahl, Desmond, Tapia, you know, whoever our guys are, Phil, your Daza, you know, all the guys. Actually. So, you know, he, can, he can play them all, but he can also play from center. Back. But yeah, Carlos Estevez seems to be really relishing the role. He's in, I don't know if you call it fireman role, the, the sort of the guy you want out there in the, in the sticky spot. Can really get, can get the swing and miss. What are you seeing from him in that? And, and what about his personality, actually? Well, you, again, like I think you know, so much is his confidence and, and feeling you know, comfortable about who he is and how he's playing. I think that, that, that lends itself to performance. And, you know, for, I think most of the season, uh, he's performing. And, uh, you know, I think there's a, a growing confidence in, in his ability to, to do what we ask him to do, and that's, you know, pitch late in the game. And there are times to come in, middle of an inning, with guys on base for, for an out or two. He's able to get strikeouts based on his stuff. He's got he's got high velocity. He's got a breaking ball that he can play in. You know, he's, he's occasional change up to the left-handed hitter. So he's he's got weapons. You know, once he gets you know to the point where I think there's a little bit of an overthrow in there, there's a little bit of a max effort delivery. And once I think he calms that down a bit, I think we'll see the. You know, the, 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 the control and command will get a little bit better moving forward. But I, I think this year has been a great year for him to be solidified as a, as a big league But I haven't seen the line of yeah. Is, is, is Tappy in there today? No, Cap's still, uh, still sore from uh, fouling the ball off his knee. He's going to go through a full range of activity today and hopefully. Uh, you know, we'll see by the end of the through treatment and some moving around whether he's available for the night to, to pinch hit, play, or whatever. But we spoke earlier, and, and he indicates that he thinks he should be, uh, you know, ready to play ball. And whether he does or not. We've seen some decent starts for, of late for the starting pitchers, but Jeff Hoffman had one of his better starts in his, in his last outing. What do you see from him maybe that he's doing a little different? Do you think it helps that he gets the month of September to kind of just get into a more normalized routine? Yeah. Well, uh, I think with Jeff, we, and this was sort of started by Jeff and a little tweak his arm swing that he's sort of adapted to here recently. He started a little bit of AAA and sort of carried it over here. I think that's helped sort of tighten up his, you know, his delivery, his mechanics. I think that's helped. You know, I like the fact that you know Jeff is, you know, completely on board with you know, this little bit of a change, and I think it's going to continue in the off season to, to help. But uh, again, I think performance-wise, you know, the breaking ball has been more consistent in the strike zone. Uh, the fastball has been in the strike zone. Fastball has life to it. You know, and, you know, Jeff's gifted with a, with a live fastball. So if he gets in the zone and if he gets it in good spots, he's going to have success. I mean, where all pitchers get in trouble is if you don't locate the fastball and you can't land your secondary pitch. You know, he's been able to do that in the last But he's, uh, I'm sorry. He, uh, we know about Jeff as a guy with a power fastball, a big curve. 
right now, what's his best third pitch, and where is that? Change up. Uh, and where is that? It is, is developing. It's still, uh, you know, it's, I mean, he used it a number of times in San Diego with success. You know, I think that you know, realistically, it's it's probably not there uh, you know, to, to be a pitch that, you know, that he can, you know, truly count on from start to start, to inning to inning. But, you know, it shows up at times like, well, right? I think with, with any pitcher, the, the consistency of all your pitching is what you want. And I think Jeff is still, you know, on that path to get there. And, and, and we've seen snippets of him putting together with innings and, uh, you know, certain parts of the game. And you know, his last start in San Diego was, uh, was a good one in that regard. Did he, did he, did he put his pitches together? Now, the challenge is to, is to do that as consistently as possible every fifth day. Is it a split finger change? Is that fair to Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, every every change of the unique to the pitch is right. a pitch. And this is With him, is, is, is the consistency of the change of, is that dependent upon correcting everything with the arm swing? In other words, if he gets that down with a fastball, change up. I think, I think, well, I, well, I think the, you know, some of the things that he's doing with his arm swing will help all his pitches. Help, help, help. And by help, I mean just like, you know, being able to locate the ball, throw strikes, you know, and, and feel confident about doing certain things, you know, through the course. Hey, with, uh, with Josh Fuentes, after the really bummer timing with the broken hand, and I know you didn't in spring get spring training. Spring training. I, I know you didn't get to see him every day, but did he scratch right. out? As far as you know, did he scratch out a year that was the best spot, you know? Well, I mean, he had a big he had a big year the year before, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, and this year uh, got hurt in spring training, and you know, came came, you know, uh, you know, got healthy. I think just most the last week of spring training, right? It was, and you know, that's always hard, right? And that is, it's just hard to come back from a, from a hand injury. And then you sort of go right into the season, right? I mean, we saw that with Fuentes this year. We saw that with Murphy. We saw that with Valenka last year. And he got, he broke, he broke his, he broke his hand in spring training. And, you know, the hand is so critical to, to hold him back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm expert in that. Okay, yeah, that's his right. How do you hit? How do you hit when you guys right. when your hands are? Because the ball's coming in awful hot and you're squeezing and you did your hands are. Right?